create cool and inspiring events at Ad America? Easy. You can go to our website at www.adamerica.org.id. If you've clicked it, then choose create an event, then click collaborate with us, fill the form, upload your documents if needed, then click submit. For confused? Then you can download a proposal example as your guide. After you have submitted your proposal, your proposal will be going through a review process by our team. And why are you still here? Go to our page now and send your creative ideas to us. We'll be waiting for you. Hi everyone, I'm Fina, one of the advisors for Education USA here in Ad America, who is ready to help you with your study plan in the United States. We can help you with many things and here are some of the services that we provide for you guys. And how can you get access to any of this? Very easy. Simply email us to jakarta.atamerica at educationusa.org. We look forward to it. What you need to know about Education USA at America. Fact number one. Education USA is a U.S. Department of State network of over... Pada Ramadan tahun ini, masyarakat di seluruh dunia, termasuk warga Amerika dan Indonesia, sedang bekerja, belajar dan beribadah dari rumah. Meskipun kita berjauhan secara fizik, semangat kita tetap bersama dalam menjadikan bulan suci Ramadan sebagai momen untuk refleksi diri dan peduli dengan sesama. Saya Heather Variava, kuasa usaha at Interim Kedubes AS, mengucapkan selamat menunaikan ibadah puasa. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Ad America TV. My name is Maya. I'm one of the guides at Ad America, and we welcome our audience members joining us online. We truly hope that you are doing well and staying safe amidst this outbreak. Anyway, for those of you who are first timers here, hi, welcome to Ad America TV for the first time. Ad America is the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta. Ad America is the U.S. Embassy's American Center here in Jakarta. Our mission is to provide a space for young generations of Indonesia to learn more about the United States. We have temporarily moved to a solely digital platform so you guys can enjoy our program from the comfort of your own home and help flatten the curve of COVID-19. Don't forget to leave your questions in the comment box below and our panelists will answer them later in the seminar. Uh, and for those of you who are joining us through Zoom, there are a couple of features that you can use to actively participate in the seminar. You can use the raise hand section to ask your question, and you can also use the chat box section to simply just to say hi to the other participants and also the panelists as well. But don't forget to use these features wisely, right? Cool. Now, today we are going to be having the third session of Travel Photography Workshop. And I believe this is the last session of this series. But as per usual, we are going to be having a social media quiz before we begin. You guys ready? Okay. The question is, during the COVID-19 pandemic, this American travel photographer has inspired thousands of other photographers to create photo series with common household objects using the hashtag OurGreatIndoors. Who is this photographer? A. Annie Leibovitz, B. Brooke Seward, C. Erin Sullivan, and D. Kirsten Rich. Get it? Okay, I'll repeat the question one more time. Listen carefully. During the COVID-19 pandemic, 
This American travel photographer has inspired thousands of other photographers to create photo series with common household objects using the hashtag OurGreatIndoors. Who is this photographer? A. Any Leibovitz, B. Brooke Seward, C. Aaron Sullivan, or D. Kirsten Rich. You can participate in this quiz through our Facebook comment and other social media comment section, actually. And stay tuned till the end of this program to find out who got the correct answer. And one more thing, guys, please don't hesitate to take a selfie and share this experience to, you know, so the other know that you enjoyed this experience through your Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and tag us at AdAmerica. Now, without further ado, please join us, Pa Andrew Suryono. Hello, Pa Andrew. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you clearly. Cool. All right. Okay. So, um, shall we start? Okay, Pa Andrew, take it away. Okay. All right. I'll take it away. Thank you, Maya. Okay. I'm going to do a share screen. One moment. All right. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is staying um, safe and healthy at home. My name is Andrew Suryono, and I am a travel photographer. And today is our last session in the travel photography workshop series. Uh, we've been having the series every week. Now it's running in the third week. And um, this week is going to be um, the last one on the series. Well, time flies. I hope you are enjoying the, um, the session so far. And the, this final session is actually my favorite session because we are going to talk about photo editing. We're going to transform a good photo into a great looking photo. And I'm going to show you live how I do that. So if you remember, we had our first session on the 6th May and we discussed about the in and out of travel photography. And then we, the second session was about travel photography gear where I showed you all my photography gears and stuff. And now we are on the third session where I will show you how I edit my photo live. And if you wanna access to the recording, uh, you can go to the YouTube channel of the Ad America, or you can go to the resource page where I will show you how you can get access to all the recordings and all the material later on in this workshop. So stay tuned. So, and, um, few house rules to get the most out of this um, workshop. Please remove all distraction, go to a quiet room where you can concentrate and put your zoom on the speaker mode for the best viewing experience. I'm gonna be showing um, my photo editing program live. So it's gonna be, you know, some things are gonna be quite small. So it might be hard for you to see if you're on the gallery mode. So go to the speaker view mode so you, so you can get uh, get to see everything clearly. And participation is strongly encouraged to get the most out of this workshop. As usual, if you have any question, put them on the chat box and I will um, answer some of them in between the session, okay? So, agenda is today is why edit and retouch your photo? And then I will show you some editing basics. Then I will sh um, show you live on how I edit some of my photos. And then also, um, we are gonna talk about how to write captivating title and caption. So it's not important just to make a good photo. It's important to tell the story behind your photo as well. And I'm gonna show you how I did this as well. Then we're gonna have a longer Q&A session. So let's talk about the big question, the big elephant in the room, okay? Editing photos, is it cheating? Is it cheating to edit your photos? I'm going to answer this question because I know a lot of you are thinking, okay, uh, I don't want to edit my photo because I think it's kind of cheating, you know, it's you're like making things up, you know, you're adding something that's not in the photo and so on and so forth. So I'm going to debunk some of the myth before we move on because I think this is important for us to understand. First of all, I don't think an editing photo is uh, cheating because why? Number one, you need to match what your eyes saw our eyes are much more sophisticated than our camera. Our eyes can see uh, more of what was inside the scene compared to our camera. If you know, um, in, in photography, we have a term called dynamic range and you, the best camera usually 
usually have like 15 stop of dynamic range, but our eyes can do a lot more than that. Maybe in the, you know, it's above 50. So what we see with our eyes may not be able to be replicated with our camera. And we use editing to bring the scene back to our uh, experience. You know, we, we will do the best that we can. Of course, we cannot match it 100%, but that's one of the reasons why we edit the photo. So this is a picture that I took when I visited New Zealand. And this was taken at the apartment that we stayed in. It was early in the morning. I woke up early and then I saw this sunrise scene. And this is what the camera saw when I took the, the photo. But this is not what my eyes actually saw. So I went to the editing uh, software that I use and then I uh, up the highlight and then I make it the, make the scene so that it's, it really represents, represents what my eyes uh, saw. And this is what it looked like. It's much more natural. It's, um, you don't see the extreme contrast between the shadow and the highlight and you can, it's, it's more believable for um, the other person to see. So editing doesn't mean that you have to make your photos so fake and so um, unbelievable, but sometimes you need it so the, the camera can match what you see in reality. That's what the point that I'm trying to get across, okay? And then this one, I took this when I was in Tibet. I was um, on a train, right? So I have to shoot through the, through the glass. And this is what the camera saw, which is not what I saw at all. It, the scene looks a bit washed out because of the, um, the glass that I, uh, that I had to shoot from. And also the white is not pure white. You know, this is snow and it's the, the white that's usually taken by the camera is not uh, purely white. So I had to adjust this scene on my um, editing software to get this scene. So this is much more... Um, like what I saw with my own eyes, okay? And the next reason why we want to add, um, why, why we want to retouch our photo is to add more mood or style to our photo. So this was taken in Lombok Island, uh, Sengigi Beach during sunset. And I feel that this scenes needs more warmth to it. So um, went to the editing software and I tweak the white balance for just a little bit to get a much warmer scene. When you make something warmer, it gets more attention and you can invite more people to view your photograph. So by just a simple edit, just a simple tweak, uh, make the scene warmer, you can literally change the mood or style of your photo. And this is one of the reasons why we are doing editing. And this shot, I took this shot in a nearby market in near my home. It's called the Kupran Market. And I saw this young boy just, you know, looking dead serious at me when I was photographing the market. And um, I has, asked his permission to, to shoot the scene and he, he obliged to it. He, he was such a good poser as well. But then I felt that the, the color of this photograph really doesn't do justice to the drama that this photo is creating. So if you, if you wanna add drama to your photo, what do you do? You turn it to black and white. And this is the final black and white version that I um, I managed to get from my photo editing software. So really, when you um, edit, you can literally change the mood or the style of your photo. Okay, so that's the two primary reasons on why you should edit your photo. And then the last but not least, you should edit your photo to prepare for the final output. Now, we are mostly um, showing our photographs for uh, online use. For example, you might use it for um, you know, email or social media, but sometimes you want to print the photo. And then the setting that you have for printing a photo and for displaying photo for the web is two different things. And you have to adjust your photo for the right output when you edit the photo. So these are the three most important reasons on why you should edit your photo. To recap, it's to match what your eyes saw. And number two is to add mood or style to your photos. And finally, is to prepare for the final output, either for screen or for print. And for web, you wanna put 72 DPI. I will talk more about this later when I do the demonstration. And for print, you wanna do 240 or 300 DPI, which means um, DPI stands uh, display per 
inch. Okay. Now, uh, I love this quote by an American photographer. Uh, her name is Annie Leibovitz. She said, those who want to be serious photographers, you are really going to have to edit your work. You are going to have to understand what you are doing. You're going to have not just shoot, choose, shoot, shoot, shoot. To stop and look at your work is the most important thing that you can do. So by editing, we are also stopping the photo uh, taking process and we really evaluate what we are doing in our photography. So I think this is a really great quote and um, stopping and looking at your work and really learning from it is such an important part when you are um, learning photography. So I'm um, going to talk a little bit about the basics of editing now. Uh, number one, good editing begins before you even press the shutter button on the camera. So what do I mean by that? Editing cannot hide or fix bad photography skill. So you get, you need to have it right on the field. Okay, master your camera settings and the fundamentals of photography completely. And don't believe in the fix it later mindset. I know a lot of beginning photographers when they, uh, when they were on the field and they're taking photo and they see that the photo is not turning out right, uh, one of the excuses that they uh, always tell me is like, oh, it's okay, I can just fix it later in Photoshop or, you know, I can edit it later. Don't do that, you know. It's, it's easier just to retake the shoot and then when you, do, when you do it right on the scene, on the field, then you don't have to do the editing. It will cut off your editing time. So the, um, the amount of things you get correct on the uh, field will determine your editing time. So the more you get it right, the less editing you have to spend. And then some things cannot be fixed. And I will show you some of the things that cannot be fixed uh, with uh, photo editing. For example, like this one. This is an out-of-focus picture. And no matter how good you are in editing, you cannot fix an out-of-focus out of picture like this one. Okay. Next one is the composition. You know, I, I visited the, um, this in Vatican, and I want to get like a grand view of this building. And um, I was looking for the right angle, and this is the first angle that I took, which is okay, but it's not, it's not the, the angle that I wanted. And I cannot fix this in Photoshop. The, really, the angle that I was looking for is something like this. So you have this leading line coming um, directly um, from you to the building, and this is drawing the viewer's attention. So in terms of composition, there is very, very little, little thing you can do in um, editing. Uh, it's just better to move your feet around when you are shooting on the field, okay? And, okay, so this is my editing workflow. First, I set my camera to shoot in RAW, okay? Uh, you can do RAW or JPEG, but if you want to be serious about editing and uh, travel photography in general, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you to shoot in RAW. And not all camera can do this, but make sure you read your camera manual and uh, see if the, the camera can shoot in RAW. Why? Because RAW will give you a larger color range uh, for, to, to give you a better illustration. If you are shooting with a JPEG, you are like drawing with um, an eight box, uh, eight color crayon box. But if you are shooting with RAW, you can get like, you know, the whole, fact the whole factory of crayon so you have a lot more color to choose from because raw data contains much more information than the jpeg and then it also acts as a proof of authenticity so people can just create jpeg file from any program like if you know about photoshop you can easily create something and then save it as a jpeg but with raw it can only be created in your camera so a lot of um, big publication like national geographic they ask you to submit the raw file as well. If you're joining photo competition, they will ask you to submit the raw file because they want to know if you are the, the owner of this uh, file. It, it will act as a proof of authenticity. Think of it as a negative. It's, this is a digital negative, if you're familiar with uh, film terms. So this is a digital negative of your photo. So it's very, very helpful if you have a raw file. And number two, you should get an external hard drive to store your photos. When you are traveling, you will end up with a lot of photos. And if you're only using the internal storage of your laptop or computer, you will run out of space very fast and it will make your computer run really slow. So my recommendation is to get a big external hard drive, uh, 
I recommend 500 gigs or maybe one terabyte is even better. Generally, the larger, the better. And next is you don't want to edit all your image. You need to select the winning images first and only edit those and you don't have to worry about the rest, okay? So what software do I use? I use two software. I use Adobe Lightroom. Uh, I've been using Lightroom since the first version. Now it's on version 9.2. So it's been running for almost nine years. And recently I've been playing around with Luminar 4. It's the photo editing that is using artificial intelligence. I will show you how I use those uh, two tools in the next uh, session. And last but not least, you should have an online backup of your photos too. You know, we never know what will happen to, to the physical um, place that we live in. Um, sometimes your hard drive can get stolen or, you know, things can happen, you, you know, something can get on fire, hard drive breaks down. You never know what will happen in, in the physical world. So it's, it's very, very recommended to have an online backup of your photos because once you lose the photo, you will not be able to get it back. So it's, it's better to have an offline backup and an online backup. With an online backup, you can access it anywhere and it's um, providing you a safe place to store and protect your photo. So always think about the online backup solution as well. Okay, now before I go live in um, demonstration, demonstrating how I edit some photos, uh, do we have some questions? Let me see. Okay, don't see any questions in the chat. Um, do we have any questions from either uh, social media, uh, Maya? Yes, but we actually have some questions from Instagram. Okay. All right. Uh, it's from Amelia Ross. She okay. asked, Super cool. Could the material presentation be shared? Yes, um, I will share the resource link at the end of this presentation where you can um, watch the replay and also download the PPT um, slides. Okay, um, next question mm -hmm. is also from Instagram. It's from okay. Cheryl Lehova. Okay. Cheryl Lehovia. In order to make a photo looks more alive, Mm -hmm. to show what kind of feeling should be felt. Should we okay. just use black and white or black and white more like a sad picture? Sorry, black and white more like what picture? A uh, sad picture. Sad picture, okay. Yeah. Well, um, the thing about editing is there are so many things you can do and everything that you do will uh, either add the, the mood or change the mood of the scene. So. Uh, if you're a beginner, it's very hard for you to know what kind of feeling you're adding to the photo because it will take you some experience um, to, to actually know what kind of feeling you're developing in a photo. So um, my, my suggestion is to learn what kind of feeling you are adding to the photo by looking at the edits that you are done. And also you can ask your friends or you know, uh, your families, like what's the first feeling that you that you feel when you look at this photo. So that will give you a better understanding of what kind of feeling that you are putting in your photo. So um, yeah, so I hope that answers the question because um, I think, you know, if, if, you, if you are talking about the different, um, the technical stuff and what kind of feelings that, you know, we are adding to the photo, it can go on and on and on because there are so many permutations and so many um, possibilities that you can do. Okay, um, one more question. Okay. Also from Amelia Roth from Instagram. Right. Mm -hmm. How about autofocus feature? What is it? Autofocus oh. feature? Yeah, that's that's the question. Okay, I'm assuming that she is um, talking about the background blur because I, why would you want to take a photo that's out of focus unless you are I'm feeling very artistic <laughs> or um, you want to do some kind of special effect. So um, yeah, the background blur will work if you want to focus on your subject and you want the background to be blurry, you know, maybe there's something distracting on the background and you want to, the viewer just to focus on the foreground so you can do that as well. Um, I think it's, 
it's it's a nice um, way to present your photo. It's a it's a technique to help your viewer focus on what's in front of them, rather than having their eyes wander around the photo. And um, it's definitely something that you should do if you if you if that's the effect that you are looking after. If that's what you want your viewer to do. So that's my answer. Okay. okay. You may continue. Bob. All right. Okay. Now I am going to share my Lightroom screen and I will show you how I edit my uh, landscape photo. Just a second. Okay. Can you see the screen now? Yeah. All right. Great. So this is uh, in Adobe Lightroom. Lightroom is a software that I use a lot in um, photo editing. I've been using Lightroom since version 1.0, which is now uh, been nine years. So I've been with this program since it were in, in, in its infancy. And it has developed to a very, very solid um, photo editing software. Now, why not Photoshop? Some of you might ask because um, when Adobe made Photoshop, it was designed for a graphic designer. And Lightroom is designed more to, uh, for photographers. So this is not only an editing software, it's also a workflow software. So up here, you have the library module, which you can um, use to select and give your photo some keywords. So this is where you organize your photo. So usually I go to the library module and I pick the winner on my, of, of the shots that I did. And um, after that, I go to the develop module to um, edit only the winning photos. I don't really care about the bad photos that I take. I only edit the winning photos. So, um, you know, a, another way to say it is don't waste your time editing poorly taken photo. Only edit the good one and make it even better. So that's one mindset to have. And after that, I will go to the export. So you go to file and then you go to export. And then you can choose where you want your uh, what sorry what you would you want your photos to um, to have when you are publishing so for example if you are publishing to the web then you can choose like for email you know or if you want to print it you can choose um, burn full size jpeg here okay so this is the last step that i will do once i'm finished editing uh, my photo okay so that's kind of uh roughly on the workflow on how I do my editing. So first I select the photo, and then the second one, I finish editing the photo. And the third one, I export it, and then I send it to the appropriate channel, whether it's print, whether it's web or Instagram, and so on and so forth. So when I edit my photo, um, if you can see on the right-hand panel, this is the all the available tools that you have, okay? Now, it can be quite overwhelming and you have to spend quite a bit of time to really understand uh, what they do and also what are the options that are available to you. But for, for this workshop, because we only have a very short amount of time, I will just give you the essentials. So up here, we will see the histogram. Okay, So histogram is the distribution of light that's visible in your photo. So on the very left-hand side here, we have the black. This is pure black. And on the right hand side here, we have pure white. So by pure black, I mean when you print, you will not be able to see the details on the black. It will just print black ink. Okay, You will not see anything. And on the pure white, the printer will not spit out any ink. It will just be plain paper. So if, if you have something that looks like, sorry, this, right? It's just going to be uh, this area here, the red one. Uh, the, the printer will not spit any ink on it, okay? So this is very, very important, and this, is, this should be the basis of um, how you edit your photo. Okay, now um, what I'm going to do is, is going to be um, quite difficult for you to follow, especially if you're a beginning photographer, um, because I am already familiar with all the tools here. So when I look at the photo, I know uh, what what... I need to do in this scene. So I don't have to play around and fiddle around with too many slider and stuff, okay? It's like uh, going to a, the operation room, you know? When, when you see a patient, you kind of know what you need to do with them. But if you're not an, an experienced, things, but you know, it's, it's one step. 
the feel out of it. Okay, and then and think what you will do and um, um gonna show you some of the most important and uh, other edit they are basically the um, the Asian shield slider. So exposure will make your photo darker. You will affect the general uh, if you move to the left. Okay. Contrast is basically making thing making things that are that are white wider and making things that are black blacker. So if see. It's gonna stretch. Looks whiter, and the black looks blacker. In the histogram, um, this is pure, which is gray, and shadow. Shadow is between black and the mid gray. So highlight is something like the. Um, the sky here, which has which is blue in color, and in terms of light tonality, it's between uh, the the middle area, the gray area, and the white one. So if I add more highlight, the sky will get brighter. But if I decrease the highlight, you can see the sky gets a little bit darker. And shadow, shadow is in between black and mid gray, so it's kind of like dark grayish. So if I pull the shadow up. You should see the this area here, the area on the rock, should get brighter. If I increase the shadow, see it's getting brighter. And but if I decrease the shadow, it will get darker. Okay. And white is the you know the area that's mostly white in this example is the cloud. So if I increase the white, you will see the cloud will get wider and wider and wider. But if I decrease the white, the cloud will get darker. Okay. And black. Is the opposite of white, of course. If I add more black, you see the, the black thing gets more darker. But if I increase the black, the, the black things get brighter. Okay. Then we also have the this is texture, clarity, and dehaze. This affects the sharpness. So if I zoom in and then I increase the texture, you will see that the rocks get sharper in this photo. Same thing if I do with clarity here. Okay. So do these two affects the sharpness of the photo. Um, vibrant saturation, this will affect the, the strength of the color in your image. So for example, if I drag the slider up, you will see that the sky gets bluer and the brown gets browner. And um, the difference between vibrance and saturation is the vibrance is um, selective. In, they, they don't increase the saturation of all colors. They only do it selectively. But saturation, they just crank up all the color intensity in your photo. So these are the essential um, slider that you will uh, find when you edit your photo. So if I am faced with this kind of uh, photograph, what do I do? Number one, I feel that the photo is a bit dark um, because we have two different contrasts, a very contrast, uh, contrasty scene here, I should say. You have uh, the sky that's really bright and the foreground that's really kind of dark. So Let's brighten that up a bit using the exposure, okay? But as I brighten things up, I don't want the sky to get too bright. So the sky falls into the category of highlight and I will tone it down a little bit. And also I want the white to get a little bit darker just to make it uh, more realistic, okay? And I want this rock to be um, brighter. I'm gonna increase the shadow just a tad. Okay, and I want the rock to look very, very sharp. So I'm gonna increase the texture just ever so, um, maybe to the 50 level, so you can see more details here. And clarity, I don't have to crank it up as much as the texture. Maybe um, 17 is good. And uh, I want to have more color in the sky, so I will tweak this vibrance just a tad and also increase the saturation just a little bit, okay? So 
now with that simple editing we go from the this is before okay and this is after just a few tweaks of the slider you can get a much more uh, appealing images okay this is very very simple editing i don't do anything crazy i don't add any object or i don't subtract any any object um, I work a lot with National Geographic and uh, cloning a subject, which is removing a subject from your scene or adding something to your um, photo is definitely not allowed because they want to preserve the photojournalistic nature of it. And this is primarily how I edit my photo. So that's kind of how I edit my photo in um, Adobe Lightroom. Okay. So um, let's go to the next photo. And yes, um, Maya, um, somebody had a question or something? Um, no, not yet, but Okay, I'll continue. You may then. continue. Yeah. All right, cool. So the second picture is, um, I took this shot in Niagara Falls, right? If you go to Niagara Falls, my recommendation is you go to the, you cross the border to Canada and then you see the American side because the American side is, much prettier than the Canadian side, okay? Um, and you, you can only see the American side, not when you're on, on the American side, you have to go to the other side, you know? It's like, you can't see yourself uh, if you're not looking in the mirror and you have to, you know, basically go to the Canadian side and shoot from the Canadian side to get the pretty looking American side. And I shot this at night and basically, um, Niagara Falls is really famous tourist destination. And usually people visit there during morning or in the afternoon, which is great if you want to experience some waterfall, um, you know, splashing to your face and there you want to get on a boat and get close to the waterfall, you can do that. But I think the, the picture really comes alive when it's at night because you see like the waterfall will be highlighted with so many um, different colors of light, okay? And when I see this photo, I, can, I will have a sense of how the photo looked like just by looking at the histogram. You see in this histogram, most of the distribution is on the dark side. So meaning you will see a lot of blacks in this photo, or a lot of shadows and a lot of blacks, right? This was taken at night, so it shouldn't be um, any surprise. So what should I do here? So basically, uh, your camera is not really good in displaying pure white or pure black. You, pure black, sorry. So you have to help your camera uh, to um, see black and see white more clearly. And you have to do this using the, you can do this using the white or black slider. So for this uh, photo, I want to make the dark darker and the white wider. So what I can do is I can drag the black slider ever so slightly. And then I will also increase the shadow, right? By dragging it to the left a bit. But I also want the waterfall to have some life too. And the waterfall uh, will have some highlight and some whites to it. So I will increase the highlight and you will see the waterfall area gets brighter. And I will also add some white to this photo just to make it glow more. Okay, for texture, I can add, I can zoom in and then I can have, a, can increase the texture so it looks sharper and also the clarity. And if I want to, I can increase the vibrance to like plus 16 or the saturation just a little bit. One thing that you should note with editing is you, you don't have to go crazy with all these sliders. You know, usually just a little tweak here and there will um, add like dramatic effect to your photo. And um, one more thing that I will do in this photo is because this is an architectural shot. I like the straight line. I like the vertical line to be vertical and the horizontal line to be vertical. And one way to do this automatically is you go to transform and you hit the auto button and it should correct your um, photo. Okay, it's not working. So um, you can do it using this one. And if it's not working, you can do use your crop tool and you just, have to tilt the, you know, the crop. So it's the vertical lines looks vertical and the horizontal lines look vertical. And so this is the final image that 
I get. So let's see the before and the after. You will see much more contrast and it has a lot more drama into the scene. Okay. Now, if you don't like to have uh, too much white here, you can also always decrease the white just slightly so it's it looks more natural. Okay. Okay. And let's do the, okay, let's see. Okay, we can do one more here in Lightroom. So this is actually the opposite of the previous photo. If in the previous photo, we have a lot of blacks, in this photo, we have a lot of white. And again, this is straight out of the camera. And as I told you before, your camera is not good at representing pure white or pure black. And this is such a great example of it. If you remember on my uh, first uh, Zoom session, uh, the, the reason I got started in photography is to take um, a picture of my my stuff on a white background, and I I didn't uh, I wasn't able to do that, you know, because the camera is not seeing white; the camera is seeing just like light gray, and it's the same scenario, it's the same case on this photo. So in this photo, I'm gonna help my camera see the pure white. So I'm gonna increase the white, and you will see that the grayish uh, water spray here turns wider and turns more realistic. You can also increase the highlight to help you do that. But at the same time, I also want to uh, increase the shadow. So we have more contrast and also the blacks. You can also add texture and some clarity as well. I don't think I need to add um, vibrance or saturation because there is really nothing I want the, the color to stand out. And maybe I can warm this scene just a little bit because this was taken like in the um, late afternoon. So I'd like to have some, some warmth to it. And the way to do that is to increase the temperature of this photo. You do that by dragging temperature slider slightly to the right and you get a warmer scene. Maybe I just crop a little as well. And I think this, so this is the before and this is the after. Looks much more realistic and um, it's more believable. This is really um, bringing what, what I saw on the scene come to life inside, inside my photo. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to move to another application, which is Luminar, which um, will use artificial intelligence to edit the, my photo. But before I do that, do we have any questions coming from the audience? Actually, yes, but we have okay. a question from Instagram mm -hmm. from Pixel Late. Okay. She said, good day, sir. How to evoke moods through hue in a landscape photograph? Okay, that's a good question. In Lightroom, okay, let me go back to my first image. Okay, now um, if you scroll down, there is a panel that's called the HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. Okay, if you want to play around with the hue, you can do it here. For instance, um, if you want to play around with the blue hue, which is going to affect the the sky, you can drag the slider and you will see the sky changes to different color. So, you know, this is some, the, the slider that you want to look at and you want to um, play around with it. Another cool trick that I can share with you, if you're not sure what color the, the hue is, you can always click this um, eyedropper and then you can go to the area that you want to um, affect the hue and then you can just click and drag. And, you know, you see on the slider, it, it's affecting the blue and the purple hue. So that's one, one way to deal with that. So if I want to add a, a warmer tone to this image, then I will just play with like the yellow, yellow and orange hue and see where it takes me. So it's not adding um, any color because we don't have any um, uh, orange or yellow light coming through it but if i want to do it do it in general i will go back to the temperature slider and i will add some more 
yellow to the scene just by dragging the slider. So this is a warm image, right? And if you drag it to the left, the image will look cooler and it's going to become more distance and, and cold. And this is how the hue and how the color affects the feeling and mood in your photo. So you want to play around with the hue, um, go ahead and go here. But if that's not what you're looking after, you can always go back and deal with the temperature slider. That's the answer. Do we have any other questions before I move on to um, the next apps? No? OK. So um, I am going to close Lightroom, and I will open up Luminar 4, OK? All right, can you see the screen now? Yes, but we can okay. see your screen. OK, great. All right, so we've dealt with um, landscape photos in Lightroom, and I will show you how I use different software to, to edit my photo. Basically, I'm still very new in using Luminar. Um, they approached me and they wanted me to, uh, to basically try out. Sorry. Yes. Um, no, but sorry. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they approached me and they basically they want me to try out their, their program and see how I like it. Um, Luminar is actually much simpler to use compared to Lightroom. Um, Lightroom is great if you have a lot of experience if you want and if you want to have a great control over your images and all the small elements that come through it. But with Luminar, it's kind of like a combination between Instagram filter and Lightroom. That's how I feel about the software. So they have like a standard preset that, that you can see. So when you open Luminar, you go to the um, edit panel and you can click on the looks. Then you can have like all the available presets here. So if I'm going to be dealing with landscape, I have like all the um, different looks and style available here down below. So um, their promise is you can use like artificial intelligence to analyze and basically do like a quick edit on your scene. So we'll do that and we'll see how it turns out. So they have like a preset called AI landscape enhancer. So we're gonna be relying on the artificial intelligence to detect our scene and to um, let him do the job basically. So let me click that and see what happened. See, boom, you're gonna get like a totally different image. But what I find is sometimes the effect is too strong. So I might not want to have like 100% of the effect coming to my image and I have to drag it down for maybe um, 60 or 70 because 100 is generally too strong for my taste. Maybe in this case, I will just go to 51. And I still feel this image is a bit dark so i'm gonna increase the exposure just slightly so i get more lights coming out so there you have it i have the same result or similar result that i get from lightroom using just two slider when i'm in luminar so it's a definitely a good program to try if you're a beginner and you just want to get your hands on photo editing and you know, basically you can, you can rely on the artificial intelligence to help you edit your image. So um, I think we still have um, some time left, maybe like a five minutes. I'm going to show you how we can do so. We can use AI when we um, edit portrait. So the AI is actually quite smart in that they can analyze and they can know what are the eyes, what are the nose, and what are the, you know, the facials of person face, and you can edit. This is a shot of a model that I, that I took quite a while ago, and I'm going to basically retouch her using the Luminar. So if you look at the preset module, you have the, where is the portrait? There you have it. You have the portrait module, and here you have the AI face enhancer. So all I need to do is I can click this button and look, let AI do the job. 
So right away, you can see that she now have a softer, softer skin and you know, general, in, in general, a, a much better look. So, and I will also show you the setting that's available to portrait. One moment. And if you go to the, the face pen, the, the face icon here, you click that one, and here you will see all the settings that, of, that are available for you. So if I open the skin enhancer, um, I can eliminate the shine. So, you know, if I drag the shine removal, you will see that the, the reflection of light on her face is, you know, gets, gets more muted. And if I see the, if I open the AI portrait enhancer panel, you you have a much greater control. For example, I feel like her face is not uh, well lit enough, so I can increase the face light. And immediately you can see only her face gets brighter. If you have red eye, you can use that to remove the red eye. If you want the eyes to get wider, you can also play around with the eye whitening feature. So immediately, Luminar knows which uh, where where her eyes are, and it will apply the adjustment accordingly. You can also enhance the eye, which makes uh, her eye look sharper. If your model have a dark circle, you can you know remove the dark circle. As I drag the slider, you can see the dark circle gets less and less visible. And um, this is a fun part. It's called the Slim Face 2.0. So basically, what what this is doing is it's gonna make the face look slimmer, which I think this is a, a fantastic feature that I think a lot of um, our, our female audience will love. So um, I'm gonna experiment with this and right away you can see that her face looks uh, slimmer. And if you wanna enlarge the eyes, you can do that as well. So if I drag this over here, you can see that she'll have a bigger eyes, okay? And eyebrows, lip saturation, lip redness, lip darkening, and also teeth whitening. You can, there are so many things you can play around with, and all you need to do is just you know drag around a slider and see the effect. So uh, the effect is quite dramatic. So I'm gonna show you this is the before and this is the after. Okay, one more time. It's before the after. I'll do it uh, like uh, using a slider. This is the the before image. Okay, and this is the after. So it's it's quite a dramatic change, and you know you can get this kind of change quite fast using Luminar. Okay, so that's the end of the demonstration. Um, do we have another questions coming in, Maya? Before I yes, move to but the we next? have several questions. Okay, as expected. The first question. <laughs> the first question is from YouTube. Okay. From Dita Dewi. All right. She asks, Do you have any tips? Any tips for editing pictures of beach? Beach, okay. You have to, um, first, before you edit, I want you to um, understand that beach is a high contrast scene, which the, the sky is usually really, really bright and the foreground is usually really, usually not really dark, but it's much darker than the sky. So if you want to balance things out when you shoot, I recommend you use to, I recommend you to use the, um, graduated neutral density filter. It's basically a half black and half white filter that you can put in front of your lens. So it will tone down the brightness of the sky and it will protect the, the color of the foreground. So that's that's one thing that you, you need to do when you're shooting. When you are editing, uh, if you look back at my example, the first example, it was you know taken at the Lake Pukaki, which is similar to a beach. And you, you will see how I deal with the highlight, with the um, um, with the black and white, with the foreground and, and the background. So if you missed that, definitely go watch the replay and you'll see how I deal with that in, in that example. Okay, are okay. there any more questions? Yes, actually, mm -hmm. uh, from Rimsky00 from Instagram, okay. she asks, between Lightroom and Luminar, which one is more user friendly for a beginner? Uh, I will say Luminar. I will say Luminar because it's. Um, I just feel that you it. We are relying on artificial intelligence, and it's it's like half of your job is done by the AI 
all you have to do is just tweak it a little bit more to to your taste basically with lightroom you have like um you have to control pretty much every aspect of it which is great if you're a professional and you demand like the absolute control over your image but if you want like half of your half or even more than half to be done by software or artificial intelligence then definitely check out luminar i will also post a link to on on where you can get luminar uh, for a discount on my um, on my website later so wow if, that's very yeah. generous but <laughs> yeah welcome okay so, okay i think that's it okay that's it. Yep, okay. You may continue. All mm -hmm. right. So I'll stop uh, screen sharing and go back to uh, Keynote. Okay. Um, screen. Okay. Now that we are done with the live demonstration. Now, um, once you're done with uh, editing your photo, you need to also tell the story behind your photo. Why? Because your picture will attract your viewer, but once they're attracted, when they're into your photo, you need to be able to tell them the story behind your photo, okay? And in photography, uh, stories can be told using title and caption, okay? So the visual flow, as I would call, as I usually call it, is the, the viewer will look at your photo and then they will read the, the title and then they will read the caption and if they are interested, they will look back at your photo and you know you basically need to keep this loop going if you want your viewer to, uh, to be mesmerized by your photo. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? So how to do this? First, um, when you are writing the title, you should write it um, so that people want to read your caption. So think of it this way. The title is actually a transition, so uh, people can transition easily when they see your photo and um, when they uh, read your caption. So it should touch upon the picture, but it should be short, concise, and interesting. For the caption, you want to tell the full story and also additional story behind the photo. You should answer questions like, why is this photo important? Uh, what information do they need to know? And why is it interesting? Okay, Pa Andrew, I'm sorry yes. to interrupt, but we okay. have five minutes left. Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am almost done. Um, just going to give one more example and then wrap, I'm sure. going to wrap things up. All right, sure. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to give you an example of you will see National Geographic and how I create the title and how I create the caption. So it's called The Orangutan in the Rain, which um, as I'm pretty sure you have seen this photo somewhere, okay? And this is the, the story of the photo and the caption that I wrote for National Geographic, okay? So orangutan in the rain, Bali, Indonesia, right? So I'm first, I'm telling the viewer the backstory behind of how I managed to take this shot. So I was taking photos of orangutan in Bali, Indonesia um, when it started to rain. Just before I put my camera away, I saw this orangutan take a taro leaf and put it on top of his head to protect himself from the rain. I immediately used my DSLR camera and telephoto lens to preserve this spontaneous magic moment. So that's the behind the story on how I create this photo. And also I wanna tell the audience an additional story that's very, very important for them to know, which is the extinction of the orangutan. So have, this is what I wrote. Having a similarity of 97% in DNA sequence with humans, it's no wonder an orangutan can exhibit such a behavior. Ironically, now orangutans are facing extinction as a species because humans keep destroying tropical rainforests, orangutans' natural habitat. So there you have it. That's how I um, created the title and the caption of my photo. So if you do the steps that I showed you, you should be able to end up with a very interesting uh, looking photograph. And you can also grab your viewer's attention using a very strong title and caption. Okay. To wrap things up, um, what we have learned so far, uh, we learned that editing is not cheating. Okay, we're helping the camera to help um, see what we saw during the, the picture taking process. We can also add more our style and we, need uh, to edit to prepare our photo for the final output. Editing cannot fix bad photography skill. It is part of the whole, not the whole thing. So 
you still need to master the fundamentals of photography. And my recommendation, shoot raw for maximum quality when editing and only edit the best shots. Don't waste your time editing poor shots. You know, it's not worth your time. And always, always, always tell the story behind the photo. So this is the resource page that I'm talking about where you can uh, re-watch the replay and also uh, download the slides. And also I will put download links there where you can get the, um, the, uh, the application, the software for discounted price if you're interested to know more. Definitely take a snapshot of this uh, slide and go there. You know, I, I made a step-by-step -step video on how you can access the, uh, the recording and download the PPT. And um, you know you can get pretty much get everything from the our, our sessions there, okay. And this is what it will look like. You know, just click get access now, and you will be guided step by step on how you can get access. Okay. And uh, if you have any questions, and if you want to know more about me, you can find me on my personal website at andrewsuryono.com, and also visit my learning uh, website, which is in Inspira Gallery, and my. Passion is helping more and more people become a published photographer. Uh, now I have like seven um, students who have their work published internationally, and I plan to have more of them. So that's kind of my you know, personal goal uh, is to help uh, more photographers get more publication. And by photographers, I mean um, you know, anybody can get their photo published, not only professional photographers. Most of my students have zero to no background in photography and they learn from me, they really enjoy it, and they, they can um, get their work published, which, which gives a huge boost in, in confidence as well. So that's something that, that is really fun for me to do, and um, that's my passion as well. And in Instagram, you can find me at Andrew Suryono, at Andrew Suryono, okay? And um, I think we have reached the end of our presentation. I've, it's been a blast. Um, you know, sharing my knowledge with at America and the U.S. Embassy here has been my pleasure, and I'm ready for more Q and A. Okay, thank you so much, Pa Andrew. Actually, we have so much questions here, but <laughs> okay. I believe we are running out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so maybe so, can we do like one or two? Okay, or, there's yeah, just, there's actually a question from okay. our chat box here, Sylvia sure. Wargo. Hi, Sylvia Wargo. Okay. Uh, she asked, Hello, I'm sorry yes. if my question is out of the topic, sir. Uh -huh. So okay. what is camera lenses do you use for your landscape photography? I mean, your gear are supporting your work, right? That is true. Yes. I use um, Sony Alpha 9 for my main camera. And for landscape photography, I usually uh, use wide, ultra wide angle lens, 16 to 35 millimeter lens. I'll, I'll type, it, type it on the chat box. Okay, done. Any more questions? Okay, I think that's it. But okay, sounds good. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Been a pleasure. Um, thank you so here. much, Pa Andrew, for being here. It's been a pleasure having you here. Um, thank you so much. It's such and an insightful session. I've learned a lot about <laughs> editing pictures now. <laughs> yeah. I am, um. Yeah. Um, also, my, my last message to the viewer is put what you watch in practice. And then if you have any um, difficulty or feedback, you can always, you know, find, find me and then I'll, I'll be glad to help you out. So enjoy the learning process. And hopefully I can see more and more great pictures coming up from after you watch the session. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much, Pai Andrew. Right. That Thank was very you, generous. Thank you. I'll see you next time, Pai yeah. Andrew. All right. See you. Take care. All right. The rest of you, please don't go anywhere because I have the name of the winner for our social media quiz today. Thank you so much for all of you who have participated. The question was, during the COVID-19 pandemic, this American travel photographer has inspired thousands of other photographers to create series with common household objects using the hashtag OurGreatIndoors. Who is this photographer? A. Annie Leibovitz, B. Brooke Stewart, C. Erin Sullivan and D. Kirsten Rich. And the correct answer is C. Erin Sullivan. And congratulations to Pippi Olfita from Instagram. Congratulations, Pippi. Now you may be wondering, how can I develop an awesome idea for a place like this? Don't worry. 
You can send your event proposal to us by visiting our website at www.atamerica.or.id. Click create an event and collaborate with us. All proposals coming to us will be reviewed and your event might be featured here soon. You can also subscribe to our newsletters on our website for event updates weekly sent straight to your inbox. All right, guys, I think that wraps up this episode. This has been fun, but unfortunately, we have to say goodbye for now. Don't forget to follow our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at AT America, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. For event updates, fun content, and so much more, please follow our social media. And thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Have a great day.